participation in the war on Russia's side has already led to consequences for the North Korea. It became known that Putin's allies could have suffered their first losses in Ukraine. This was reported in the publication El País, emphasizing that the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region struck buildings in which there could have been soldiers from the DPRK. It is noted that Ukrainian artillerymen have already struck several buildings where North Korean soldiers could have been. This happened in the Kursk region. The media also writes that, according to its sources, half of the Russian fighters in Kursk are recruits. They have little experience compared to other military personnel. This is why they decided to reinforce them with North Korean troops. The Kremlin has reached an agreement with the North Korean regime to have the DPRK troops help liberate Kursk. In this way, the Russian Federation wants to avoid overthrowing part of the Russian troops that continue their invasion of the east of Ukrainian territory. The possible entry of North Korean troops into battle for the first time on Russia's side strengthens Moscow's position in the war against Ukraine, El País reports. In addition, the Defense Intelligence has reportedly published intercepted radio communications from the Russian army in Kursk, from which it becomes known that North Korean soldiers are being transported in civilian trucks to join the Russian 810th Marine Infantry Brigade fighting on the front line in Kursk. Meanwhile, according to various sources, 10,000 North Korean troops are already present in Ukraine. According to the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine, about 50,000 Russian soldiers have already accumulated in the Kursk region. North Korea experts have been expressing serious concerns for months about a major shift in dictator Kim Jong-un's stance. The Financial Times reports, in January, Two prominent researchers, Robert Carlin and Siegfried Hecker, said Kim Jong-un had made a strategic decision to go to war. Carlin, who long-headed the State Department's North Korea Task Force, and Hecker, a former director of Los Alamos National Laboratory, had visited North Korea several times. They concluded that Kim had decided to abandon diplomatic overtures to the United States and South Korea in favor of a confrontational policy. They estimated that North Korea's nuclear arsenal could number between 50 and 60 warheads and that Kim's rhetoric suggested a military conflict with them was possible. Like Xi and Putin, Kim Jong-un believes the United States is in a state of long-term decline and sees it as a historic opportunity to gain an advantage against its rivals amid a global restructuring that Xi calls changes unseen in a century. Despite the rapprochement between Russia and North Korea, China, although concerned about the weakening of its own influence on both countries, remains an ally of the DPRK, seeing it as an important barrier against American influence in Asia. At the same time, there is a widespread tendency in the West to treat North Korea as a curiosity, underestimating its real capabilities. The Kim regime, although it rules one of the poorest countries in the world, is not technologically backward, having developed nuclear weapons and ballistic missiles, as well as significant cyber capabilities that even states like Iran and Syria lack. Meanwhile, North Korea has 1.3 million troops, making it the fourth largest in the world, although most of its soldiers are new recruits with limited training and equipment. Such numbers could help with tactics that rely on large numbers of infantry. Kim Jong-un may be counting on Russia's help during the war in Europe to give him hope of receiving similar support from Moscow in the event of a conflict on the Korean Peninsula. American journalists have reported that as part of the undisclosed details of his victory plan, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky allegedly requested Washington to supply long-range Tomahawk cruise missiles. An unnamed senior U.S. official said to the New York Times that Zelensky purportedly asked for Tomahawk as a component of a non-nuclear deterrence package of his proposed victory plan. The Tomahawk missiles have a range of over 2,400 kilometers, approximately seven times farther than the ATA CMS missiles, which Ukraine received in limited numbers. The Tomahawk is a family of American subsonic cruise missiles manufactured by Raytheon. Tomahawk is a long-range strategic and tactical missile that travels at very low altitudes while navigating the terrain. The missile is produced in various modifications, which include different warheads, including nuclear, launches from various platforms, and more. After the signing of the 1987 agreement between the US and the USSR, 
on the elimination of intermediate and short-range missiles, ground launchers and ground-based missiles were removed from service and destroyed in 1991, according to the directive of the U.S. President George Bush. The U.S. official described this request from Kyiv as a totally unfeasible request. The list of long-range targets in Russia, previously submitted by Ukraine in an attempt to gain permission to strike Russian territory with American missiles, reportedly far exceeds the number of missiles that the US or any other ally could supply without jeopardizing their own needs in the event of escalations in the Middle East or Asia. Referring to four sources, the publication also noted that Zelensky was reportedly stunned by the refusal to lift the restrictions on long-range strikes following his meeting with Biden in September. Last week, U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan stated that the White House's stance on allowing Ukraine to conduct long-range strikes deep into Russian territory had not changed, although discussions are ongoing. Russian leader Vladimir Putin warned that such permission from Ukraine's Western allies would be regarded as direct NATO involvement in the war and stated that Russia is exploring various response options. President Volodymyr Zelensky addressed the Verkhovna Rada on October the 16th. There, he presented Ukraine's plan for victory in the war with Russia. The document consists of five points and three secret appendices. In particular, the secret portion has not been disclosed publicly anywhere.